we have the ulna bone. This is a left ulna. It sits in our body like this. It is an anatomical position. We have the proximal end, the distal end. We have the anterior part, the posterior. Here we have the medial side and the lateral side. Now, starting from the proximal end, I will show you guys here. The olecranon process is right here on the proximal end. It has a little ridge right here. So olecranon process. Right here, we have the coronoid process. In between these two, we have this red part right here. It is called the trochlear or the semilunar notch. Now, underneath the coronoid process, we have here the ulnar tuberosity. When we turn it on its lateral side, we have right here the radial notch. Underneath radial notch, we have right here the supinator fossa. Next to supinator fossa, we have right here supinator crest. Underneath supinator crest right here, we have the posterior oblique line. All of those make up the proximal end of the ulna. Now, for the shaft of the ulna, we have right here the anterior border. Then this one right here, we have the lateral border. Underneath, we have the posterior border. Now, borders and surfaces are opposite of each other. So if we have the posterior border here, if we flip it on the anterior side here, we will have the anterior surface. We have the anterior border here. Opposite of this border will be right here. So this is our posterior surface. We have the lateral border here. Opposite of this border will be right here. So this is the medial surface of the ulna. These are the shaft of the ulna. Now moving down to the distal end, this pink right here that I'm holding will be the head of the ulna. This blue sticking out is called the styloid process. And this orange right here is called the articular surface. That makes up the distal end of the ulna. And all together, that is the ulna bone. Okay, here we have the radius. This is a left radius and sits in our body like this. This is in the anatomical position. We have the proximal end, the distal end, the medial side, lateral, anterior, and posterior here. Starting on the proximal end up here. I will turn it so you guys can see. This yellow right here is the head of the radius. It also includes a fovea of the radius. Underneath the head, we have here neck. This is the neck of the radius. Underneath the neck, we have right here the radial tuberosity. This diagonal line here is called the anterior oblique line. Now, on the posterior side, we have a, also a posterior oblique line. All of these structures make up the proximal end of the radius. Now, for the shaft of the radius, we have here, this is the anterior border, this orange. Right here, this blue, which is a little bit sharper, is the medial border of the radius. On the posterior side, we will have the posterior border of the radius. Now, borders and surfaces are opposite of each other. So the posterior border will be opposite of the anterior surface. The anterior border will be opposite of the posterior surface here. And the medial border will be opposite here of the lateral surface. That is the shaft of the radius. 
Moving down to the distal end of the radius, looking on the medial side here, we have the ulnar notch. Turning it posteriorly, we have right here Lister's tubercle, or it is also called dorsal tubercle, either name. These four lines here in purple are called four grooves of the radius. And then this blue that sticks out a little bit here is called the stylard process of the radius. And underneath here, we have two facets. This one that's closest to the styloid process is called the scaphoid facet. And this one here is called lunate facet. That makes up the distal end of the radius. And together, that is the radius bone. Here we have a hand. This is a left hand in the anatomical position. We have the proximal end, the distal end, medial side, lateral side, the anterior side, and the posterior side. I will turn it so that the proximal end actually is to you guys, so you guys can see the carpal bones. So we have eight carpal bones. We have two rows. We have the proximal row, which is the first four, and the distal row, which is the second four bones. Now, starting on the proximal row, underneath the thumb, we have right here the scaphoid. Scaphoid looks like this on the anterior side and like this on the posterior side. This is the scaphoid bone. Next to scaphoid, we have lunate. Lunate is here and here. Next to lunate, in this yellow right here, we have the triquetrum. This is on the posterior view and triquetrum is here. On top of triquetrum, we have pisiform. Pisiform is seen from the anterior view, but not really from the posterior view. Now, starting on the distal row underneath the thumb again, we have the trapezium. This is trapezium here and trapezium here. Next to trapezium, we have right here the trapezoid. This is trapezoid. Next to trapezoid, we have capitate. Capitate is here and here. It is the largest carpal bone. Next to capitate, we have hamate. Hamate is our last carpal bone. And on hamate, we have this little part here called hook of hamate. Now, moving up, we have here the metacarpals. The metacarpals each have a head, they have a shaft, and a base. So head for each of these, shaft, and a base. Next, we have the phalanges, which are these right here. On fingers two through five, we have a proximal phalanx, we have a middle phalanx, and we have a distal phalanx. On the thumb, we do not have a middle phalanx. We only have a proximal phalanx and a distal phalanx. And now on the posterior view, these are the proximal phalanx, the middle phalanx, the distal phalanx, and again on the thumb, we have proximal and distal. This concludes the hand.